Welcome to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show featuring a variety of subjects of local interest. This program was pre-recorded, so we're unable to take live calls on today's show. And now, let's talk about it. Welcome to Let's Talk About It Sunday here on AM 1470 KELA and KELAAM.com. Maybe you're listening on the FM side, 104.3 KMNT and KMNT.com. I'm your host, Peter Obarno, for another edition of Let's Talk About It Sunday. And I have a really great show today because I've talked about hydrogen before, uh, whether it be in the legislature or just locally. We've talked about whether or not hydrogen is a, a feasible energy source, a fuel. And we've got a local student here in Centralia who has created a hydrogen cart. Um, you know, you know that there are vehicles that are hydrogen, real vehicles that people drive all, all the time. There's not a lot of vehicles locally because there aren't any hydrogen refueling stations. That will change eventually. And Pedro Picasso with Centralia, uh, he has, he's part of the Skills USA team, CTE. He has built a hydrogen uh, cart, and he's here with one of his teachers, Rob McKay. Pedro, welcome to the show. Good morning. Good, well, morning or afternoon, depending morning on when time. you want to listen to it. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> so t- tell us a little bit about your background, because we're going to get into the hydrogen cart. It's so cool. You've won awards for it. You've gotten great sponsors locally for it. But tell me a little bit about you. What? Where are you from? Um, well, I was born in San Bernardino, California. Mm-hmm. Uh, I lived in California for about 14 years of my life. I moved down here to Washington about three years ago. Yeah. Um, I'm a hands-on guy. Yeah, let's, well, let's just say obviously. That. Um, I was working, I started working with my dad since I was around seven. He's a contractor. And I got here, started working, got a lot of hobbies. Yeah. Found a lot of things that I like to do and started going from there. And so what grade are you in now? I am a junior. And what? when did you start? So you transferred here about what, freshman year then, right? Yeah. Maybe about that. And so did you just jump right in on kind of hands-on, Skills USA building things? Well, my freshman year, I took metal shop. And I was seeing that some people started doing competitions. And my teacher brought it up to me because I went through pretty much all the welding processes in less than a year. Because you wasted it. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. All right. And then my sophomore year, I started doing uh, Skills USA, and my science teacher was telling me to do FFA. We made a, a deal, and I decided to do it. I did it for extemporaneous speaking and sales, and for Skills USA, I went for welding sculpture and team fabrication. I got First place for welding sculpture here in the Southwest Washington region. Uh, Second place in state. And for team fabrication, we took third and we didn't place that state though. Yeah. So that was unfortunate. Next year, I'm going to have another project for or this year, technically, for Skills USA, another project and more FFA and a new go-kart. Yeah. Well, tell us a little bit about the go-kart you built because... I've heard about this go-kart, and then I got the great opportunity at the Southwest Washington Fair to see it. So it's hydrogen, right? It's a hydrogen-gasoline hybrid, so I can switch between. So it's an internal combustion engine, but it's also with hydrogen as well. Correct. All right, so so what gave you the idea to do that? Uh, So my freshman year, I was talking to my science teacher about hydrogen vehicles and how come we're not doing that here. In California, I have a cousin that has a Toyota Mirai, and we have hydrogen fueling stations pretty much at every gas station. And I was talking to her about it. We all looked into it. And that year, I think it was actually sophomore year, where we had a field trip with Twin Transit to go look at a company called First Mode Mm -hmm. and Zap Energy. And from there... Whenever we were at one of our competitions, I think it was regional competition, I was telling my teacher, you should give me one of the motors that you have in the back of your class so I can make a go-kart. And she told me under one condition, and that would be if I could make something work with hydrogen Yeah. and see if I could do it. So I took on the, the task and I did it. You, you did, and it, it's a working go-kart. So a working go-kart hits about 35, 40 miles per hour. I built it all from scratch all by myself. And, and and you can use hydrogen. 
and I can use hydrogen. So how how did you how do you make hydrogen? So the process of making hydrogen is you have to have an electrolyzer mm -hmm. and an electrolyte. So in the electrolyzer, you put distilled water and you, you put, add an electrolyte, which was potassium hydroxide for me. Mm -hmm. So I built my electrolyzer and I tested it with 12 volts, 12 volts DC, and it worked. So and you did it. I did it like that. Because there's a lot of people out there who are like a little bit scared of hydrogen mm -hmm. still or, or don't think it's it's something that can can happen. And you you did it at school. Yeah. I mean, I did it at home because... You didn't do it at school. I didn't, I didn't do it at school. Just in case. Yeah. Just in case <laughs> if something went south. I did take all the safety precautions. So I built a, a little cage just in case if something were to go south. Yeah. Because obviously it's still a prototype. Right. And... It worked. I didn't even have to use the safety cages or anything like that. That's awesome. Yeah, it was. There was a lot of ups and downs, learning curves for sure, but that's how it is with everything. That's pretty awesome. And if you're just tuning into the Let's Talk About It Sunday show, I'm your host, Peter Barno. My special guests today, Pedro Picasso and Rob McKay. Pedro built a hydrogen go-kart at Centralia High School uh, as part of his Skills USA team and, and a project that he did with FFA. And and Rob, uh, you uh, you teach over at uh, Centralia. T talk to me a little bit about or tell the listeners a little bit about what, what you do and what you teach and, and how proud you are of this guy. Yeah, so um, the the teacher who got Pedro going was uh, Kendra Meek, uh, who's my colleague, and uh, Pedro was uh, being taught by Kendra. Um, and I actually spoke to her the other day because I also borrowed one of those motors because uh, they had two. Uh, Pedro took the one, so I got the other one. <laughs> Are you guys going to start a competition to see whose uh, hydrogen go-kart goes faster? Well, I, I was using it to demonstrate we, we have a new class at uh, Centralia High School. Uh, basically, it's a green energy class that we are piloting at the moment. It's a, a CTE class that's being piloted, um, so I'm doing the field testing for it um, so that eventually we can develop a curriculum a pathway for uh, the – the, the people that we're going to need to to run the economy that uh, has all these new jobs. Um, so at the moment, um, we are studying um, how our internal combustion engine works. Um, and I'll definitely have Pedro in as a guest speaker because that'll be a lesson prepared. <laughs> yeah. Um, and to show them that actually an internal combustion engine works just as well. doesn't matter what gas you've got in there, whether it's gasoline or whether you've got hydrogen gas in there. You just need something exploding in that chamber to push the piston down and up. Um, but the green energy course is quite exciting because uh, it's it's a science course that, um, yeah, in, introduces students to, to these uh, emerging technologies um, so that when they enter the job market, they have the background knowledge and are prepared for what's coming. Yeah, and, and Rob, you and I talked a little bit uh, before the show started off air, kind of about this new, you know, green energy and 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 look, uh, we're, we're the the state and the nation are going in a certain direction. We may not all agree with it. We may not all agree with how fast we're going and whether or not there's a, 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 a an adequate off ramp. But what what you're doing is making sure that the students in Centralia. And, and really our entire community, because they may not stay in Centralia. Maybe they'll move to Chehalis, maybe they'll move to Thurston County, but that they have the skills ready to to tackle the, the those new renewable energies locally and with these businesses potentially moving in. Yeah. So, I mean, Peter, my background, I mean, I, as you can hear, I'm not, uh, I'm from, I'm from South Africa. Um, I thought you were from South Lewis County. <laughs> <laughs> Could be. Yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so I'll, I mean, just for context, in South Africa, um, the the people are going solar because not because they believe in green energy. It's out of necessity because um, you know you've got older power stations that uh, can't uh, that are difficult to maintain and they are costing a lot of money. Uh, so the transition is happening all over the world. It's not just here um, and. It's in many cases it's happening out of necessity. Um, I was recently just in Kenya, and uh, saw um, that a lot of people use motorbikes in Kenya to um, get around because they're cheap, and they now have a company that is releasing an electric motorbike. And what you do is that you 
uh, when your battery runs low, you you pull up to a recharging station and you actually don't recharge the motorbike. You actually just pull the battery out and replace it with a fully charged battery and you pay for it uh, using your cell phone. And that's in that's in a country like Kenya um, and it's, it's taken off because people uh, – can you know they it's an, an easy way of getting around and the electricity is cheaper than gasoline mm-hmm. um and so i think we we would be doing our students a disservice if we didn't um prepare them for the changes that are coming and that's what part of this uh, uh green energy course is and as you say it's not just for centralia high school we're testing it we're piloting it um and then it will become curriculum that's available to all schools around the country um, so that they have a course, and then eventually the idea is that it becomes a CTA route, CTE route. And Rob, are your kids excited? I mean, are the students excited about this type of class? I mean, it, it's interesting. It's very different than you know when you and I were in school. I mean, there, we, we had no discussion about this type of thing. Yeah. So what what's yeah, what's fun is that um, one of my students came to me and said, "Are we just going to learn about cars? Because at the moment we're learning about the internal combustion engine." And which you can imagine certain members of the class are very excited to be learning about internal combustion engines. And um, and then I get told exactly how well their car is working and what they've done to tweak it. And um, um, so we have long discussions about, you know, what what is what what can be done to a car and what can be. Um, and then I said, but, you know, you can you can get those accelerations if you just use an electric car. And then there's a bit of resistance to that. because. <laughs> um, but the the idea is that we understand um you know the science behind it and the and the technology behind it um and so the students are interested uh, some of them are a little bit skeptical because this is a new course and they're mm-hmm. not quite sure about it but um we'll get there it's good curriculum uh, there's a company called Educurious which is producing the curriculum and they're doing a fantastic job so far um and yeah my job is to make sure that it works in the classroom well, it's definitely working. I mean, I think Kendra and you are doing a great job, and Pedro is an example of it. Pedro, you uh, you had a, a funny story uh, for me before we went on air where you were talking about when you were trying to build your hydrogen engine, you had remembered a YouTube video, which which I laugh about because my kids always go to YouTube when they don't know something because they never ask me anymore. They go to you know their parents' YouTube, unfortunately. But cool story right yeah. tell me a little bit about that tell the listeners so when i was still living in california i would watch this youtube channel called the king of random and since i was little i would always i was still hands on cuz i'm more of a i'm more of a hands on guy i don't like just being in a chair doing my job like that like you don't want to be day. like a boring lawyer <laughs> or 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 some politician pretty, pretty much <laughs> uh, <laughs> i'm more of a hands on guy yeah, yeah. so Welding, construction, all of that stuff. If it has me moving, I like to do it. Yeah. So I would used to watch The King of Random, and they would do a whole bunch of cool projects. And now the YouTube channel's under a different owner. So they don't do all the cool stuff that they used to do. But I remember he made a hydrogen generator, and he just made it for fun to yeah. prove the things that you can do. And he also thought hydrogen was the fuel of the future. And... Whenever Kendra told me to make the engine run on hydrogen, I remembered about that video and I watched it. I took notes to see just um, what he used right, and how he did it. And then I tweaked it to what would work best for me. And after that, then I decided to go build it. Went to Home Depot, got some supplies, uh, Kerfman Custom Fabs. Got some supplies from there. Started building it. My mom did not know what I was doing. I bet. I bet most people didn't know what you were doing. <laughs> and I took it to school, but I took it in a duffel bag, and I made sure it was hidden because I know it didn't look well. So I showed it to my teacher. I was like, I made the hydrogen generator. And she was like, Let- let's go to the back room. <laughs> let's go to the back room because I opened the duffel bag up, and I'm not going to lie to you. It kind of looked like a bomb. I was just going to say, it probably looked like all this mechanical. Someone would get freaked out, right? <laughs> yeah, so that's why I tried to hide it the best I could. Yeah. So we left it in the back of the classroom for the rest of the day. I picked it up. Then I decided to test it whenever I got home. It worked. Good. I tested it with the engine, and that worked. And 
to me, that was a breakthrough. I was like, I made it work with this. I made my video. I sent it to Alyssa Grant, Joe Clark, uh, and Scott Embry. And they were all excited about it. Then after that, I found sponsors to help me with the process of getting material, um, components, everything that I needed. And my sponsors, Twin Transit, which is one I'm very happy for because mm -hmm. he's always had my back, Joe Clark. He's had my back all the way through. And all of my sponsors, I thank them because they trusted me with, it's not, it's not something cheap and it's yeah. a big risk because the whole plan could have failed. Yep. And there's all their money down the drain pretty much. Right. Joe Clark uh, signed a $1,000 check for me. Pacific Welding Supply let me borrow a welder for two and a half months, no charge. Uh, Vans Motorsports donated a helmet so that I can be safe. Yep, got to wear a helmet. <laughs> got to wear a helmet because uh, there's no roll cage. Right. So it's just right. um, hitches and things. Trevor Smith, which is one of the substitutes at the high school, he has his own business. He donated all the metal. Good. And those are my sponsors. If there's anybody listening that wants to sponsor me for this year, it's not going to be hydrogen, but it's going to be faster. So who who uh, who do they contact if they want to sponsor you? Uh, they can contact me through email. It's uh, p r d r o p i c a z o at gmail dot com, or contact me through the school. Contact or con contact this school district, and they'll mm -hmm. probably get uh, get to you. Yep. Yeah. Or Twin Transit. I mean, if they want to let them know, Joe Clark has my number. He can text me. Well, it's an exciting thing to talk about hydrogen. And, and again, I, I think what you're doing there is pretty amazing. You are listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. Stay tuned. Let's Talk About It Sunday edition will return in a moment. Okay, and now back to business. Listen on the air and online. Online. Talk about it. Good morning. You're listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday, an extension of KELA's weekday local talk show. This program was pre recorded, so no live phone calls on today's show. If you're just tuning in to the Let's Talk About It show, AM 1470, KELA or KMNT 104.3, my special guests today, Pedro Picasso and Rob McKay, Centrea School District, we're talking about the hydrogen cart that Pedro built with the help of his sponsors. It's really just a pretty amazing and and we, again, we talked a little bit off the air about, you know, my role in hydrogen at, at kind of the state and national level working on on policies to try to to move us and diversify our energy portfolio. And hydrogen is part of that. Um, we were also talking a little bit about some of the dangers of modern day EVs. And we were talking about uh, batteries that catch on fire. Talk a little bit about some of the things we were talking about where, you know, you see these lithium batteries on fire and you can't put them out. Nope. Uh a lot of people are going the electric route because it's the cleanest at the moment that right. some people can say, but they don't look at the background. It's not the, the cleanest if you're from New York, right? Coal and oil. Yep. It's cleanest in Washington maybe because it's a lot of hydro and, and renewables, mm -hmm. but most of the country is not as clean as Washington. Yeah. yeah. And I mean, I think what's happening is a lot of people are falling for what they're saying. Yeah, they're saying zero emissions, but what's the carbon footprint on it? Right. It's not easy to get all those like lithium, cobalt, all those minerals that you have to mine and everything that you need to make a battery and the car. Right. So yeah, it leaves a big carbon footprint and we also have to think about where the electricity is coming from. They right. can be coming from coal plants and yes, that's reducing it because it's coal plant producing electricity and you're not producing carbon monoxide with your car. Right. But the energy that you're putting into your car can't be clean if it's coming from such places. Yeah. And there's big dangers with um lithium batteries because like with a with the phone, I think it was Samsung's phone that would explode on airplanes and stuff. Yeah, I remember that. Or if uh just if the batteries get punctured, they just go off. Right. And it's one of the hardest things to um, one of the hardest fires to put out. There's tons of fire departments trying to find a way to do it but at this point in time we're not there right they've submerged the cars that were on fire and whenever they take them back out they're still right burning and and with hydrogen uh, you know because it's lighter than air it dissipates in it, the air yep it rises uh with gasoline yeah 
if you puncture your fuel tank, it's all going to go on the ground and leave a trail. But since hydrogen's a gas, it all rises. Rises and goes up. Mm-hmm. And, and, and nobody's saying hydrogen is like the silver bullet yeah. for energy, right? Oh, no, I mean, no. there's there's pluses and minus, but it's got to be diverse portfolio. As I said before, mm-hmm. you've got to look at as many different options for yep. the future. There's pros and cons to pretty much everything. There's nothing that's going to be all pros or something that's actually going to be perfect. Yeah, um, hydrogens do. hydrogen vehicles do have really strong fuel tanks, yep. reinforced fuel tanks. But then again, let's say through one of the lines, something leaks. It is going to rise, and there's also dangers because let's say an accident. Mm-hmm. I haven't researched anything about hydrogen vehicle accidents, but still everything has its own danger and risks and everything has its pros and cons right and so what what are some of the other projects you're working on are you you know if you're are you looking at expanding the use of hydrogen tweaking it making it better are you looking at some alternatives uh for uh for some of these engines and what what's kind of what are you what's your next step so i have a we're just gonna start your own like hydrogen go-kart company i mean that'd be pretty cool yeah (laughs) see i i loved building it uh it was all by scratch, all by myself, and with all the support from the community. Yeah. It was just, I also do it to make my mom proud. I mean, yeah. it's something that I enjoy to do, and seeing the pride in my mom, it just makes me happy. Well, and that's a good story. So besides the next step, and we'll get to that, mm-hmm. I mean, how great is that? I mean, your mom doesn't probably know anything about hydrogen, because most people don't. Mm-hmm. And then she sees you put this thing together, and you won an award at the Southwest Washington Fair. You won an award at the State Fair. Yep. Um, that's huge. Yeah. Um, so at first my mom was like, you have to be careful with all this money and just like a whole bunch of stuff because she's like, you can't let them down. And yeah, there was points in the process where I felt like I should give up, but I never let that get to me. And I just kept on going and going and fixed uh, what was wrong. And my mom saw how much work I was putting into it and we're planning on moving somewhere where we have a lot more freedom because right now we live in a trailer park mm-hmm. and there's a lot of rules and they're really strict. There's not a lot of uh, room for me to work. So we want to get a house where it has a garage so I can work in it. Right. But my mom sees everything that I'm doing and she sees how much joy it gives me and mm-hmm. how much effort I'm putting into it that it just makes her happy and she feels like I'm going to be something. And whenever I was in elementary school, my, I think it was third grade, third or fourth grade teacher, Medina Miller, she would always say that I was going to be president or be something big in life. Yeah. And if she were here, she would, I know she would also be proud. And my mom is one of the, the things that I care most, most about in life. Well, I, I mean, I could just say it for as a community member myself, you've already made it. I mean, you're going to do great things, mm-hmm. but you are somebody and you did something. Yeah. And, you know, Lewis County in Southwest Washington is really at the advent of, of kind of this hydrogen hub. And I think there's a lot of movement throughout the Pacific Northwest. And the idea that you created this from scratch mm-hmm. in high school, you are at the advent. I mean, you're you're ahead of a lot of people. Yeah. I mean, you should be very proud. Your parents should be proud. The whole community should be proud. And and I think the sponsorship is a, a perfect example of a community that's rallying behind you. Yeah. So w- with that, what, what are some of your next steps? I mean, you're good. I mean, if you can build this from scratch, I mean, are you going to give Elon Musk a run for his money? Are you going to put What are you going to do next? <laughs> hey, he might have some competition coming. Yeah, I think <laughs> Pedro, I think, yeah. I mean, you could start your own Twitter now. Just call it, I don't know, Pedro it's or something. It's not called Twitter anymore. It's called X. X, Come on. yeah, that's right. Come on. <laughs> yeah, you but what are they, what, when you send a message, are they called tweets? And they're called X's. I guess. I don't know. You can do O's or something. <laughs> do something different. <laughs> Um, so next step, I have a couple ideas in mind. Uh, if they're proprietary, you don't have to mention them. <laughs> you give right. some ideas. Okay. Um, well, one of them, I want to get just a, a go-kart that like an off-road go-kart that's pretty much already built. I just want the chassis mm-hmm. and get like a motorcycle engine, throw it in there, maybe three, four, five thousand cc's. Who knows? <laughs> just make something for fun to see that. There's a whole bunch of things that kids can make. It doesn't just have to be something complicated. Mm. 
yeah, hydrogen gets complicated. It's not too complicated, but I feel like if people see, especially this generation, the younger generation, if they see what's possible and not just, oh, you have to have, you have to be really smart to be able to make this and that. I want to prove that if you put your mind to something, anything's possible. Right. And t- tell me a little bit about uh, the the work you do in CTE Skills USA versus book work. I mean, would you consider yourself more of an academic or more of a hand? So so you're one of the perfect examples of, of folks that you found your passion. You're wickedly smart, yeah. in, in, but you're, you're not going to want to sit in a classroom, just toil away over a book. You want to yes. get in there and dig around. Mm-hmm. Well, see, the thing is, I... When I was in elementary school, I was told I had dyslexia. Mm-hmm. So reading isn't really my thing. <laughs> so in class, I hate when it comes to do this assignment, read this this many pages and write that. Mm. So whenever I found out that we had a metal shop class, I was like, I have to take this. Yeah. Because I, I just uh, like the joy of seeing the end result. Yeah. So you start off with... Like me, I started off with a pile of metal, and then result a go kart that won first place in both fairs. Well, and an electrolyzer, and an engine, and and all the other. But you're a perfect example of why, um, you know, we talk about diversity and in, in energy, diversity in education, mm-hmm. right? Because not every kid is college bound. Some are career ready. Some learn in brick and mortar. Some were learn through the the virtual academies. I mean. Everybody needs to find the way that they learn best and, and get their passion. And, and it seems like you you found it. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's just something I feel I have the um, I feel like if you're going to do something in life, like, uh, for example, a job, I feel like if you want to actually be good at it, you have to be passionate about it. Yeah. Not just uh, I'm going to pick. Uh, I was working at Great Wolf. I was a lifeguard there. I didn't really like it. I was doing it. Because they were paying pretty good, and it was the only job that I was hiring at 15. Right. So I was doing that, but I never liked it. And I I couldn't see myself doing that for 10 years mm-hmm. or more like another year. <laughs> Well, Pedro, I mean, I, I think I think your your wisdom is well beyond your age. I think a lot of folks, um, you know, get into careers that maybe they don't have a passion for, or lose the passion for it. Mm-hmm. I think you found a passion that you're going to have for a very long time, and the listeners are hearing someone with a lot of passion, and hopefully, they're heeding some of your wise words at such a young age. So. I appreciate you coming here, Rob. Do you have any uh, any last thoughts on on Pedro and and maybe even uh, to maybe students or parents who are listening to this show who want to do what Pedro's doing? How do they get involved? Yeah, so I think that's uh, that's you know again uh, having moved here from another country. I mean that's one of the things America does well is. Um, it provides these opportunities. So there's these multiple routes in the education system that if you dig around, you know, there's new market, uh, there's, you know, running start, there's all sorts of programs that, you know, you just need to look and, and dig around and find out about that you can craft something early on. If you have a passion, if you have a, um, you know, if you, if you have some interest somewhere, and even if you don't, if you, you know, most students, obviously, at, you know, you're not sure what you're going to do. You don't know what the future is. Um, but the main thing is to, is to do something and to find some kind of path and, and go for it. And um, Pedro is an example of that. He's, he's, he's kind of created his own path and made his own um, sort of road in front of him. And he, he I, I mean, I'm speaking for him, but he, he, he didn't know where this was going to go, if you know what I mean. He just, he just took a path and he went for it. And I think that's, I think that's gold. Um, and there are lots of opportunities around. And there are barriers, of course. There's always barriers. But uh, as you can hear, when you reach a barrier, you know, you, you find a way around it. You, you know, Pedro needed a welding kit. Um, and he got one, and he, he got given one for for you know two and a half months to 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 follow what he wanted to do, um, and but he wouldn't have known that before he started this project. You right. know, he he wouldn't have known that 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 somebody was willing to, uh, you know, lend him a a, a welding kit, um, and so one can't let those barriers get in the way. They they're there. They, I'm not trying to sugarcoat this. They're there, but um, you'll find that when you 
when you confront those barriers, there's there's ninety nine percent of the time there's actually a way around it or an adaptation that one can do. Well, I want to thank uh, you, Pedro, for coming in. Rob for coming in. Uh, if you want to support uh, Pedro or Rob or the students at Centralia who are putting these amazing things together, maybe you want to help. Uh, Pedro with his next project. Make sure you reach out to the Centralia School District office, get in contact with Rob McKay, uh, reach out to uh, the staff and and help uh, Pedro Picasso uh, do his next amazing things and give uh, Elon Musk a run for his money. Pedro, Rob, thank you for coming on the show today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Let's Talk About It Sunday. I'm your host, Peter Obarno, here on AM 1470 KELA and 104.3 KMNT.